Good morning. Welcome. Please stand. the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of the Father and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Hallelujah. 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 Welcome to all of you. Uh, welcome to our parents. Uh, welcome especially to our first communicants. Uh, we all welcome to your relatives and friends who are also uh, joining us uh, through Facebook. So welcome. Uh, we are still in the season of Easter. That's why uh, we always joyfully proclaim Alleluia. Because our Lord is risen. And our risen Lord offers himself to us in the sacraments. Especially through the Eucharist. Confession and baptism, which uh, we all receive. We're now going to renew our baptismal promises with the sprinkling rite, and I invite you uh, to uh, make the sign of the cross as you are sprinkled with the holy water.
Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption who live and reign with the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit God forever and ever They devote them, themselves to the apostles, teaching and to the fellowships, to breaking of the bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe, and many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. And the believers were together and had everything in common, selling them possessions and had everything in common. As goods they give to everyone, at anyone at tea need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoyed the flavor of the people. And the Lord added the number daily. Those who were being saved, the word of the Lord.
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Jews quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Amen, Amen, I say to you. Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. For my flesh is, is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. Just as the living Father so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, unlike your ancestors who ate and still died. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. In our gospel, in the gospels, Jesus once said, let the children come to me. Let the children come to me. When the children went to him, he blessed them, embraced them. My dear parents, by having your, your child come to Nativity School, where we form them, teach them the faith, help them grow in the relationship with Jesus by having them come to their first communion today you have answered that invitation of Jesus to let the children come to him so thank you for answering that call that invitation Let's hear it for our parents, for their care and love for their children. My only uh, advice is to continue to let the children come to Jesus. By your example, by your teaching, by continuing to foster love and faith in your own family. That means praying together as a family. That means supporting their learning, what they're learning here in Nativity School. It means, more importantly, bringing them to Mass. I know that during this pandemic, uh, a few of our families or a lot of our families are just doing celebrating Mass online, which is you know, ha just having a spiritual communion in prayer. But it's different, as you probably have experienced. It's different from receiving Jesus in His body and blood when you come in person to Mass. It's different. 
in uh, in the homes it's just like watching a netflix <laughs> so it's really different you know we we advise and suggest to people watching the mass in their homes to have a kneeler you know to uh, stand sit kneel to participate in uh, the prayers and singing while they are you know uh, participating in the mass online but it's still different uh, we hope that soon we'll be able to go back into the church in terms of our timeline uh, in july we'll start the uh, renovation of the floors in the church uh, by september hopefully we'll have new views in the church and hopefully by that time we'll be able to uh, open the church for in person so that people could we could continue to gather and worship as a community in person because it's different when we are together like here today there's that that uh, spirit that uh, communal spirit when we hear each other praying so today that's our hope uh, for our children that parents uh, continue to let the children come to Jesus, especially in the Eucharist. To all our first communicants, you have done your first, your first confession. Some of you might have done your second confession to prepare yourself for, for today. I always compared confession to um, like taking a shower, taking a bath. You know, to be healthy and to be clean uh, physically we go to confession I, I mean we go we take a shower right yeah so that we could be clean you know we accumulate dirt dust you know uh, during the day so we need to wash ourselves right. same thing with our souls our souls accumulate the dirt of sin because of our weakness you know, uh, so we also need to go to confession regularly to take a shower with the mercy of Jesus to cleanse ourselves of the dirt of sin and this is an invitation not only to, uh, to our first communicants but to all of us adults and parents it's a beautiful example if you set the example of going to confession uh, for your children because it shows them that we all need God's mercy and that we also need to forgive each other just as God has forgiven us so you guys have prepared yourself for today through your confession how many of you are feeling nervous right now Okay, quite a few of you. <laughs> How many are feeling happy and excited and joyful? Very good. Yeah, the parents are very happy. It's okay to be nervous and to be happy because today is a very special day, right? Before, you know, when you celebrate Mass, uh, you, you process uh, together with your family, but you have your hands crossed, right? And the priest uh, will just give you a blessing. But from now on, you're going to go uh, in the uh, communion line with open arms, with open hand. You make a throne for the King, Jesus, in order to receive him in your soul in yourself so it's a really special day for you from today to the rest of your life you'll be receiving jesus in your heart in your soul to be one with him so this is really special for all of you and i hope that you will continue to grow in your love for jesus in the eucharist During this pandemic, 
I'm made aware of the importance of the Eucharist. I've heard people when we, uh, last year when we shut down, I heard people asking me, Father, you know, I feel so, you know, uh, so um, hungry. I feel so dry because I'm not able to receive the Eucharist. So once we were able to open up last year in June, thank God that people are now coming to receive Jesus in the Eucharist, to quench that thirst for Jesus in the Eucharist. During the pandemic last year, I would visit a very close friend of mine. Uh, she is like my second mother. So I would spend my day off with the family. But before I go home and return to the parish, I would celebrate Mass uh, for her and her husband and the family because they were not able to receive the Eucharist because they were just watching uh, the Mass online. So I was really glad and happy that before I go home, I'm able to, I was able to celebrate Mass with them, give them Jesus in the Eucharist. And last January, my uh, close friend, who is like my second mother, she got infected with the virus. And by the end of January, she succumbed to the virus. She died. But I was thankful and feel blessed that she was able to continue to receive the Eucharist. I didn't expect that I would no longer be seeing her. But as a priest to be able to give her the Eucharist gave me hope and peace that she has life eternal. Because that is, that is what Jesus said in the Gospel today. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. For the, give, for the bread I give is my flesh for the life of the world. The, the blood I offer is true drink for life eternal. So it gave me peace that my second mother was able to receive the bread of life that could give her life for, inter for life eternal. Another very close uh, parishioner and friend was uh, Sergio Barranco. When we reopened last year, uh, he helped uh, in our reopening, set up the stage, the microphones, the sound system, he was there to provide music and singing for our 12, uh, 10 o'clock mass, Spanish mass. So uh, he would play the, the keyboard and he would sing to lead the community in the, uh, in the worship and praise during mass. Last January, she, he also got infected, but it was because of love. January, he called me and said, Father, I won't be able to help out with the music for a few weeks because my brother and my father got infected. I need to take care of them. So he, he was taking care of his brother, his father, and because of that, he also got infected. But he was the one who was hit hard and didn't survive. So January, uh, we've been praying. We've been praying and praying for, for him as a community. But he succumbed to the virus as well and died. He was only uh, 46 years old, very young. But the blessing that I see in his life 
was I noticed before before the pandemic hit that he was not going to communion so I said Sergio how come you're not going to communion you know you're here always you know singing uh, for for the community uh, giving praise and worship to God yet you are not partaking in the Eucharist in the banquet and he said father I know I have to really uh, set a time to, uh, to uh, go to confession to you. <laughs> Thank God that we made it happen. So we set the time, you know, he went to confession and started receiving communion since then until he died. That's another blessing. Because Jesus is his bread of life. In a way, he was preparing himself and knowing that this year would be his last. He was preparing himself for eternity by receiving Jesus in the Eucharist. So, my brothers and sisters, this is what we celebrate. The love of Jesus for us in the Eucharist. You know, when we love someone, we want to be with that person, right? We, we, we want to be united with that person. We want to spend time with that person. We do things for the health, the protection, the, the safety of that person. And that's what Jesus is doing to us. In giving us his body and blood in the Eucharist, Jesus is being present to us. Jesus is being united with us, being in communion with us because he becomes one with our body. You know, he becomes like the, the vaccine you know, that protects us you know, because we consume him. You know, Jesus keeps us healthy spiritually, keeps our souls healthy and strong. So this is what we celebrate today, my dear brothers and sisters. Uh, there's a saying that we are what we eat, right? We are what we eat. If we eat junk food later on, you know, we'll feel the uh, it in our in our body when we start to form, you know, extra fat here and there. So we are what we eat. If we eat healthy food, we will be healthy. If we take our vitamins, we will be healthy. Same thing with our souls. If we consume Jesus, who is like our vitamin, who is like our health food, then our souls are healthy. So my dear first communicants, may you be what you eat. And all, it also means that may you be Jesus for others in the way you extend your love, your kindness, your generosity you know, to, in your family, in your classroom, wherever you are. May you be who you eat and that is to be like Jesus for others. Amen. Amen. We now stand. Now that we have heard God's word, we ask his blessing, especially for the children whom Jesus welcomes at his table today.
civic leaders. May they govern and serve with respect and wisdom. We pray to the Lord. That we may share Jesus' joy and peace throughout our entire lives. We pray to the Lord. As we share the true bread from heaven, may we share the good things of life with others. We pray to the Lord. children and their families on this day of their first communion we ask this through Christ our Lord Amen. please be seated
pray, my sisters, my brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name. For our good and good of all this holy church. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings we here present through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father most holy. Through your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, your word, through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so, Father, with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Jose, our Archbishop, our Auxiliary Bishops and all priests and deacons. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her faithful spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you to your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all, all distress as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace, everyone. Peace, peace, peace. <laughs>
Behold Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Those of you watching in your homes, I invite you to make your spiritual communion at this time. Just invite our Lord Jesus to come into your heart, mind, and soul, and just talk to him from your heart. Except for the first communicants, uh, you could be seated, because you just have the first communicants remain standing. So the way we're doing a First Communion today, our First Communicants will line up on this side. I will be here to give them their First Communion. That way they could be seen also in the camera. I just invite the First Communicants and also uh, those of you later, the adults who are receiving Communion, just to use the sanitizer uh, that uh, Ms. Chu has uh, before uh, receiving uh, Holy Communion. <coughs> Okay, so uh,
We are those we love. Let us pray. Grant, O oh Lord, we pray, that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life, which foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood, who live and reign forever and ever.
Teachers, if you could please hand out the roses to the students. Dear parents, for saying yes to our lives and for offering us a chance to live and grow, we say thank you. For the times we needed someone to talk to and you were there, we say thank you. For the times you did so much for us and expected so little in return, we say thank you. For the times no one believed in us and you stood firmly by us, we say thank you. For the times when we were sick and you gave us your special loving care, we say thank you. Loving God, we thank you today for the gift of our parents, through whom you give us life and nourish us. Bless them with good health, happiness, and a peaceful spirit. Give them strength when they are tired and hope in difficult times. Grant them whatever special blessings they are in most need of today. With grateful hearts, we praise you for the gift of Mother Mary, whose example encourages us to continue to say yes to your will and grant that we may continue to bring Jesus into our homes and into our troubled world. We pray with confidence in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. First communicants, please give your thank you roses to your um, family members. Let's hear it for our parents and our first communicants. Congratulations. After the Mass, celebrate. Celebrate with your, uh, with your family. Uh, celebrate uh, this beautiful uh, uh, sacrament uh, that your children have uh, received. 
So continue the celebration and keep the joy in your heart. Before the final blessing, uh, if you have uh, religious articles to bless, if you could just raise them up and I will bless them. Uh, religious articles, uh, you know, uh, mementos of this uh, beautiful location, if you could just raise them up. Heavenly Father, we ask your blessing on these religious articles, a reminder of the wonderful gift that Jesus has given us, his body and blood in the Eucharist. May those who use it grow in their faith and love for you, receive your blessing, your protection, and peace and joy uh, through the intercession of Mary, our mother, and Saint Joseph, our patron. And we ask this in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So if you could just raise your uh, religious articles, and I will bless them. So thank uh, uh, Miss Chu, Miss Armenta, uh, Sister Stacy, and our faculty who, who are here, continuing to serve and to journey with our children. So thank you, and to our music, John, Lucy, thank you. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. This respond, Amen, after its blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of His only begotten Son was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by His blessing. Amen. May He, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. May you who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Let us go in peace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you have any announcements, Sister, or Miss Chu? No. So, basically, we'll have uh, the recessional song. We'll sing two verses. Then after that, uh, we'll have the picture taking. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, you know, we'll just do it, uh, uh, yeah individually with the first dominicans and parents could just uh, be seated and wait yeah, while we take the pictures mm -hmm.